Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the conference board event. It's called the Sixth Annual Innovation Masterclass. It's here at Xerox Park. I'm really excited to be at Xerox Park. I've never been here. I live like a stone's throw away. And as you know, if you're any type of a student of history, this is where so many of the really the core fundamental foundational technologies were developed a long, long time ago. Mice, uh, GUI, a lot of fun stuff. But that's what now we're talking about today. We're talking about helping companies be better at innovation. A series of, of fantastic presentations and we're excited to have our first guest. He's Vittorio Villarengo, and he is the VP of Cloud Security for McAfee, just coming off your uh, your presentation, so great to see you. Uh, likewise, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so you were talking a lot about Sprint, and, and you know we talk all the time about DevOps and how that, that world has really changed in the software development world to get away from waterfall. But you talk about kind of applying those same principles not just for software development, but in marketing and your role as a marketer. How did you come to that kind of conclusion that this was probably a better way to get things done? Yeah, well, I have an interesting background where I, I used to run engineer, uh, engineering and product management, and then I moved into the dark side to marketing. And, uh, and I used, um, successfully used Scrum in uh, building products. And uh, if you look at Scrum and Agile methodologies, at the end of the day, their methodology, methodologies to get things done in a world that changes often. And that applies to any functions. And so I said, why not doing it in marketing? Right. And so I've been doing it in marketing now for six years. But you juxtaposed it, you know, it's now December 6th, I believe. So everyone, the whole room got to get a good laugh out of them is, is in the throes of their annual business uh, planning coming off their QBRs as they wrapped up 2018. So, you know, there is kind of an annual process and there is an annual budget. So how did you, you know, find a convenient way to marry the two things well, together? I, I think that everything is frantically uh, pretending to know what's going to happen next year and building plans that go out 12 months that never pan out. Right, right. right. Um, now, unless you're doing something that is the same thing over and over again, then, then you can. But if you're doing innovation, by definition, you don't know what's going to happen. So I think a better approach is to align around the goals and then take the goals, decentralize the execution of the goals to the function. And then uh, in my case, in marketing, I take those goals that are applicable to me and I break it down using Scrum. And uh, I do uh, cycles of two weeks. I tell the people, I fill the, the, the backlog with all the top initiatives that I think we should do. And then when we get into a sprint, I say, okay, what, is the most important, what are the most important priorities for the next two weeks? Right. I tell the team, and then the team tells me what we need to do to achieve those goals. And every two weeks, I'm in front of them talking about priorities and then reviewing how we move the needles to achieve the goals. Right. So a lot of people, there's plenty of stuff out there for people that aren't familiar with how Scrum works and how yep. this process, so we won't get on that, but what I want to talk about is some of the, the secondary benefits that maybe people don't understand. They're only looking at kind of the process of these two week sprints. But you, you highlighted on a whole bunch of kind of side benefits that come as a result of this process. Number one being, you know, constantly reinforcing your priorities, which are the company's priorities, to your team every two weeks. That's a pretty amazing communication flow. Yeah, look, every, when people think about Agile, they obsess about the stand-up meeting every day. You know, that's, people that are obsessed with that, they don't get Agile. What Agile is, is about constant communication about the priorities, letting the team innovate and tell you what to do, and then being able every two weeks to adjust to changes. So instead of executing against uh, initiatives and plans that you built a year before that may not be relevant based on the market changes, you're actually dealing with the reality, measuring how you're progressing against the goals, and then make changes as, as you go. And it gives an amazing platform for even junior people in the team to step up. You know, sometimes in a hierarchical structure, you have somebody junior, really good, that is boxed in, in the corner. With Scrum, I come up with the priorities. If somebody just out of college says, I'll, I'll take that, say, okay, go ahead, do it. And then if they deliver, good for them, good for you. Right, another, you, you touched on so many good topics, we could go on and on and on, but another one you talked about is really the, the divvying up of time. You know, you try to manage kind of the interruptions for the team. You try to be that kind of traffic cop, if you will, to enable them to use, I think you said the target is 75% of the time during those two weeks is actually getting work done. And 25% of the time is managing the minutia that we have to manage every day. I think that's a really important concept because I think a lot of times it's, it's, easy, it's easy to do the minutia because yeah. it's in front of your face. Super important role for, uh, for a manager. Yeah, look, when was the last time you, you liked being interrupted? 
right? And and if you are using your intellect to design, to to sell, to do whatever you know, activity requires you know, using your brain, content switches is really expensive. And so the idea of Scrum is that you plan these two weeks, so you don't have to like spend a lot of time thinking about th- three six months out. Just let's think about the next two weeks, and then during those two weeks, you never ever, ever change the priorities. And so that allows engineers or professionals to stay focused on what they're trying to do and get it done. Right, right. Another piece that I thought was pretty interesting is is you've got the two weeks sprints and you've got your two weeks priorities and you now have an ability to switch if you need to based on market pressures, competitive pressures, whatever. But how do you continue to tie that back to those goals? How do you how do you make sure that you don't lose sight of the fact that maybe you didn't have an annual plan because we know that's going to change but you're still making sure you're driving towards kind of the general direction of where you're trying to go. So the way I do it, uh, every two weeks, we look at all our top goals. And we, we look at how closer we are to achieving those goals. And of course, I, I map those goals. I split them by, by quarter and then by, by weeks so that you, at all times, you know if you're achieving your goals or not. And because of the two weeks interval, if the head of sales, in my case, comes and say, you know, they, they always have big priorities that has to be happened tomorrow. And Not yesterday. <laughs> usually they're yesterday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so usually I, I, I go to them and say, hey, here's the list of things I'm going to deliver, my team is going to deliver to you in the next, in average, in the next week, right? And is what this emergency you're talking about more important than this? In most cases, the answer is no. If the answer is yes, then the question is, can that wait a week? And then I, you have the full attention of my entire team. And so that way, you keep doing what you do. And, and in Scrum principle, you always ship. So you always work on things that you can actually ship during those two weeks. And then you can take the whole team and, okay, let's now uh, please the head of sales and, and uh, go ahead with that priority. <laughs> and then the other thing is because we look at the goals every two weeks, I can also look at the other sales and say, oh, you know, you won't really want to run this program in, uh, you know, pick your region, you know, S- South America, where we, have no, we don't have any goals of growth in that area this year. So you can also use the constant communication, constant interlock on goals to say, you know, maybe you shouldn't do it. Right. So last thing, Vittorio, just to get your insight as you've been doing this for years, you know, what's the, what's the greatest benefit of managing a team this, this way that most people just don't get? I mean, we talked about the frequency of communications. You talked about the frequency of being able to change course. You know, what is it that, that, that people are still kind of doing it the old line way are missing? To me, Scrum forces you as a leader to focus on the two most important things that I think any leader should uh, you know, take care of. One, crisp priorities and communication. I think those are the, the roots of, uh, of how many companies get in trouble when they don't have clear priorities at all levels and they don't communicate those priorities and the result they are, they are achieving. And I think Scrum really forces you every two weeks to be there on the treadmill with the team. Uh, and, and the third thing, I think, is to empower the team to size and tell you what to do uh, and how to do it and not you telling them what to do. You tell them what are the priorities. Let them tell you what is the best way to achieve the goals. Such a great, such a great lesson, right? Be a leader, not not let yep. let, let your people do what you hired them to do. Yeah, because you if, see more and more. Look, to me, if you're hiring great people, if you're managing them, what are you gonna do? If you hire people that are better than you, if you're manage them, what are you gonna do? You're gonna slow them down by definition. So let them tell you what to right, do, right. how to do right. it. Give them a direction and get yeah. out of the way. All right, Vittorio, well, thanks for uh, for taking a few minutes and really really enjoyed your talk today. Yeah. All right, we're at the Innovation Masterclass at Xerox Park. You're watching theCUBE. See you next time. Thanks for watching.